Hey you guys, so I know I haven't made a video in a long time and I just want to take this moment to throw a quick little update in my Night Rose deck profile that we're going to be doing today. That I am, that I know I take these breaks on my channel. Um, I just want everybody to know that uh, for my personal life, you know, I have a lot of stuff going on. I also work two full time jobs, so I try to do the best that I can to make sure that these videos come out. Lately, I've just been really, really tired, and I want to say thank you to everyone that's been supporting me that, you know, is staying with me on this. And, you know, I'm working on a lot of, I'm still working on a lot of new stuff. The last video I made that was saying I was back, like, I'm officially back. Like, I still am back. I just need that little hiatus so that I can make sure that I can bring you guys new content. I got some new stuff from my little, like, YouTube studio, or my little homemade YouTube studio or whatever. I got some new equipment to make everything come out better. I'm trying out a new setup in here so that everything comes out nicely. So that's my main goal into making sure that we can create the best videos that we possibly can so that this way we can go ahead and just enjoy the game of Vanguard all together. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop right into this deck profile. I just wanted to throw this little out, video out. Like I'm literally like in my pajamas as like I'm making this video but I just want you guys to seriously know that like I, I am serious about doing this, but at the same time, like, I have other things that are happening as well. I have another YouTube channel that I just started, and I need to hop back on that, because I've been a week away from that. But, that's just all I want to say out there. So, thank you to everyone that's joining the channel. Hello and welcome, and thank you to everyone that's subscribed to the channel. I just want to say thank you so much for staying with me on this journey that we're going, and we're just going to keep on growing and growing and growing together. So, without further ado, let's hop into our... Night Rose deck profile for the November 2020 meta. To the next slide we go. Alright, so you guys, thank you so much for joining into today's video. Today we are going to be talking about Vampire Princess of Night Fog, Night Rose for the November 2020 meta. I've been playing this deck for the last month now. I did pick up this deck recently. I was playing the other two decks that I have coming up, which are Kokaitis and Night Mist. I got the whole Grand Blue lineup that I've been playing and testing out. I'll make sure to leave those videos down in the description below. Night Rose is the most recent one to join into the family. And I have to say that out of all the decks that came out from the most newest set at this time, which was the Rummy Labyrinth set with Shadow of Vampire and Harry. Night Rose, I actually didn't really care for it that much. I was more interested in building um, Shadow of Vampire. I didn't have Pale Moon and I don't have Murakumo, so I didn't care about those either. But I did have Kokaitis, and I, Kokaitis is honestly one of my favorite Grand Blue units because he was the first Grand Blue deck I picked up when I first started playing Grand Blue because I started playing Grand Blue back when you had the Night Mist. Limit Break, Break Ride with Kokaitis Reverse. So I just decided to throw that little deck together. I did end up making my own variation of that deck, so I'll definitely make sure to show you guys that. I have some pretty interesting choices and text I want to show you ever since this deck was hit by the ban list a very long time ago. But, Night Rose, the deck is strong. It does, you know, it lives up to the hype. It does everything that everyone says it does. This deck is one, however, that I didn't find too much flexibility with, only because I'm still playtesting out. I'm only a month into this deck, and I've just been playing with like a lot of other decks, and I've got all my other stuff going on in my life, so I haven't really gotten the chance to experiment too much with her. But this is a really solid build that I've been playing with um, the help of some other people that I just th that I just found was really good. And I want to showcase it off to you guys, and that's just something that I felt that I wanted to say about the deck because I want to be honest with you guys about everything that I do is the fact that you know I'm not like some hardcore grand blue master this was just a solid build of the deck that I've seen through some Japanese deck lists and some play testing as well as some TCG um, you know as well as some online games I've played that this is the best variation of the deck that I came up with personally that to fit my play style how I wanted to play it just keeping everything truthful. So without further ado, we're gonna hop right into this deck profile. All right, so we play four copies of Vampire Princess of Night Fog Night Rose. She is the star of Grand Blue at the moment, the hottest card to join the block. For those of you who do not know what Night Rose does, she has two abilities that are both active on the Vanguard Circle. One ability is 
is that whenever a unit boosts or attacks, that unit gets 5,000 power, and then you have to retire it at the end of that battle. And then the second one is when she attacks, you choose a column, a superior card, superior call two units to that column, and she gets 10,000 power. So essentially, this card sets up to create multi attacks. You're going to use this card with a combination of other cards that you can get an array of different abilities that allow you to go off to have stronger multi attacks. But essentially, you're going to have four attacks in turn, four to five, depending on how late you are in the game, by calling the cards from your drop zone, specifically your skull dragons, to go hard and hit them with those big attacks at your opponent. With the way that we built this deck, this card allows you to choose a lot of cards from your drop zone. Your drop zone essentially is your second hand of the deck with the choices uh, and ratios of other cards we're going to play in the deck. But really, she just helps with big attacks for smaller amount of multi attacks. I know that like five to four to five attacks like the big thing right now, but she gets four solid attacks if you're just using her without other cards. And they're all really, really powerful. They break over four stacks really easily and excel and other protect decks have a really hard time against this simply because of all the other units that combine with this card. So overall, pretty solid. Every time you see Night Rose, just know it's going to be good because since she's been introduced in the game since the beginning that she came out back in G, she's just a really solid card. That's all I got to say about Night Rose right here. For our next grade three, we play three copies of Dragon Undead Skull Dragon. Honestly, I don't know how you can run any Grand Blue deck without this card. Night Rose with this is really insane because over time as you're stacking cards in your drop zone, this card just stacks more and more power to the point where it just essentially becomes unblockable. And with the way that the game is now and the way that this deck is built, getting to those 32 or that 45 or 44 with a booster is not like an unrealistic feat at all. It's really easy to do and I just want to play three because I want to maximize my chances of seeing this card in my deck or in my drop zone as soon as possible. So Undead Skull Dragon is still the best beat stick that Grand Blue has. Moving on to our grade twos, we play four copies of Green Shade. Green Shade is still one of the best cards in the game in my opinion. This card is amazing. I'm sure there are other players that could explain to you why this card is amazing, but essentially what this card is, this card just says discard a card from your hand, search my deck. That's how I see this card. The additional 5k is helpful as well, because again, it assists with us making stronger numbers, and we can also set up for a little bit of an early game rush, as this card on rear guard itself puts two cards in your drop zone on top of the discard. But you get that one card back anyway, so it's really just two. Overall, the best card in Grand Blue just entirely, other than this other card, this card gets second place for that. I don't feel like this is much of a debate as this card literally says, ditch a card from my hand, search my deck. And then for our next grade two, we play four copies of Pirate Swordsman Colin Bar. Okay, so essentially what they did with this card was they said, let's look at the best grade two that Grand Blue has already, and let's go ahead and make it better. So Colin Bar is the hot topic that everyone's talking about with Grand Blue. And if you don't know what this card does is, well, I'll give you the rundown. Essentially, this card says, Counterblast 1 on Vanguard Regard Circle, when placed, you search your deck, place that card into the drop zone, and then call one card from your drop zone out. However, you can only use Colin Bar once per turn. That's totally fair for what this card does, because being able to use multiple times in a turn is pretty broken. It gives your deck the ultimate utility. Well, it wouldn't be broken, but it gives your deck the ultimate utility. This card essentially says, Counterblast 1, search my deck out for any card I want, and this time I'll play it on my board. But overall, this is the main card that we're going to be using to help get our pieces started and build up a better drop zone for our future plays. You're going to want to use this key card in a lot of your Night Rose multiple attacking strategies, as this card helps you deck thin properly and lets you search out for your Skull Dragons or any main pieces you'll need later. For our next grade two, we play two copies of Captain Nightmist. So Captain Nightmist, personally, at least the ratio that I play, this is just a personal choice. I really like to go for those five multiple attacks. So having a card that essentially has like the second half of the Columbard skill is pretty useful to me. And this deck, although it is counter blast heavy in this deck because of most of the other abilities that we have, you essentially have counter charge in the deck, but 
worth it because for me, I want multiple attacks and this ability just simply says counter blast one, call any card you want from your drops under rear guard. And if we already used our Colomar earlier in the turn and we can't use it again, Captain Nightmas is pretty much a substitute for that. And then for our last grade one, I play one copy of Storm Ride Ghost Ship. So I only play one copy of Storm Ride Ghost Ship because honestly, I don't really go into this card that often. For me, personally, I like to kill my opponent as soon as possible. So the moment that I start seeing those Skull Dragons in there, my brain kind of just automatically goes into that. Unless I'm in a game where like I had a G assist or I'm struggling really hard in card advantage, simply because the way that my trigger item is with this deck, then I'll go into the whole Banshee Ghost Ride Ship play. But I usually don't see this card that much or usually call that card that much unless I use Colin Bar to search them out. So I just only play one in case I need the extra draw power. But having one of it's still okay to have, so I figured why not play it. Alright you guys, so we're going to go ahead and move on to our grade ones. I play two copies of Ripple Banshee. So I'm playing two copies of Ripple Banshee simply because she helps us get stuff out of our soul if we need key pieces like let's say we rode into our column bard or we have a card such as our Dancing Cutlass which you'll see later in the deck in the soul. So having her out to get cards out of our soul and build up our drop zone is good as well as the additional draw. This is the column that I would combine with my Storm Rider Go Shape. Like I was saying earlier, if I wanted to get extra card advantage because she'll draw me a card at the end of the battle, he attacks, he'll draw me a card. So having two of her in the deck is what is essentially needed so that we get cards out of our soul and get more draw power. For my next grade two, I play two copies of Skeleton Sea Navigator. So I know I'm really late on this deck profile, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Go ahead and dislike it if this is how you feel. But I was one of the few people who, before Skeleton Sea Navigator became hype, thought about playing this card before everyone started playing this card and everybody thought about playing this card. And I'm gonna stay true to that simply because it's the truth. Because I used to play Night Rose, you know, online when it first came out. And then I always thought to myself, like, unless I milled out with Green Shade or back when I was playing, like, Danny Guy Mario still in the deck because I wasn't playing Tommy yet because I thought Danny Guy Mario was still, like, the most amazing utility card for the deck. Uh, I threw Skeleton Sea Navigator in there because he just sits with a mill so I can make space for Tommy. So, be upset about it, but I'm staying true to my story. I was one of the very first people that thought about playing Skeleton Sea Navigator in the deck. And for those of you that don't know what he does, he essentially just rests himself in another rear guard so that you mill five cards from the top of your deck. And the reason why that's important is because since we play a variety of cards in our deck, we want to be able to make sure that we can build up our drop zone so that by the time that we go into our night rows, we'll have a variety of units we get to call from depending on where we're at in the game. Like if we're going second, we want more card advantage, we can go into our Banshee and our Ghost Ship play. If we want Colon Bard, we can increase the chances of seeing with that. Essentially, playing this card earlier in the game helps us deck thin so that we can also reach that uh, limitation of the number of cards we might need in the drop zone. So that's why I thought about playing Navigator. I stayed true to my claim that I was one of the very fir first and few people who thought about playing Navigator before it picked up over here in the West and later in Japan. For my next grade one, I play three copies of Tommy the Ghosty Brothers. I feel like you can't play Night Rose without Tommy the Ghosty Brothers simply because like he's in the art of the card. Plus, he's just sick looking, always has been. But no, in all seriousness, I play three copies of Tommy the Ghosty Brothers simply because I don't play that many grade threes in this deck and I do want to be able to see my Night Rose. It's like critical you see your Night Rose because being placed on any other card or just well, we only have one other grade three, which is Dragon Undead Skull Dragon, but writing that card, especially with the way the game is, sucks. Like, beatdown style just isn't the way to go right now, especially with the way that the meta is. Unless, like, you have Sentinel, you know, Restrict, but we don't have Sentinel Restrict anymore because it got banned. Because it'd be, I guess, broken in Grand Blue. So, just having this card help us stay on our deck and search out for our grade three pieces, like our Undead Skull Dragons or our Night Rose and just dumb cards from our hand is very helpful too. Plus, he's a really good first ride target as well. For my next grade one, I play four copies of Dancing Cutlass. So as I said earlier with Captain Night Mist, this deck does have a bit of a counterblast heavy issue in the sense that you have to use Night Rose every single turn. You want to be able to use your combo board, 
columbard every single turn and you do want to set up the multiple attacks which nine times out of ten costs one or two counter blasts so our opponent can damage Nias to make us have choice restrictions on if we want to use columbard or if we want to use night rose so having cutlass to essentially save us from that situation and get a middle off that card is pretty simple plus there's plenty of combo plays you can make with cutlass like calling over itself so that you get more than one counter charge is pretty simple to do as well it being a 6k unit doesn't bother me i just really play this card for the counter charge and i don't like playing that grade one unit that you have to call from hand because i felt like that was dumb like this is grand blue you're calling everything from the drop zone so cutlass was just the better option in my opinion and then for the star of the grade ones the true star skeleton t navigator is cool but he is nothing compared to the power of Witch Doctor of Powder Bone and Negra Bone. So, in case you're wondering why everybody says that this is the best grade one that Grand Blue has, it's because this card is free. If you don't know what this card does, his ability is in a drop zone, you ditch a card from your hand, you place him on the bottom of the deck, and then call a card from your drop zone, and that's grade one. And then, if you have 10 or more cards in your drop zone, you essentially get to call anything else instead. So, this card is pretty much free. You're gonna ditch a card from your hand, put him on the bottom of the deck to call anything you want from the drop zone, and this activates in the drop zone. So, it's essentially safe as well. It's not on the board, so it can't be retired or can't be retired or affected by Narukami if you call it to the front for whatever reason. Plus, this card essentially lets you drop anything you need from your hand to help go into your other plays. It lets you call anything you want from your drop zone at whatever point in the game you need it to be. And it's just free, like it goes back into the deck as well and we can use our cards like Columbard or anything else we need to to put it back into our drop zone. So essentially, that's why Witch Doctor of the Power Bone Negro Bone is so good. Have to play four of it, have to. And then for our trigger lineup. So my trigger lineup is actually like really, really simple. It hasn't... This was the trigger lineup that I've been sticking with from the very beginning because I already knew that this is what I wanted to play at the moment I see the deck. We play four heals because we have to, because heals are amazing. And then we play 12 crit. I've seen other players play the draw trigger. I don't know why. I feel like when you play the draw trigger in Grand Blue, especially with the way that it is, you're essentially going through your deck a little way too fast, even though this isn't Kokitis, but you're playing Navigator for the extra mill. You know, we have Skull Dragon, like Skull Dragon gets really big numbers, but without that extra crit, he's not as scary. So I figured, why not just do that? If you want to, you can go ahead and take two of this out to play two copies of Gustion. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But for me, I was like, 12 crit is the way that I'm gonna go. That's how I'm gonna go, that's what I wanna do with this deck, and it hasn't failed me since. But I would say that out of all the clans in the game, Grand Blue definitely has the most flexible trigger lineup because you can play one and it can be okay because thanks to cards like Columbard and Green Shade and um, Skeleton Sea Navigator, everything is like free. Like you can pretty much search your deck for anything you want. So I definitely am not upset about doing that. I just like playing 12 crit because straight gas and this deck is the best way to go in my opinion. And then finally for the starter, we're playing Night so we have to play Undying Departed Grenache in the deck. It just fits the theme of everything that we're trying to do, so, you know, why not play Undying Departed Grenache? All right, you guys, and that is it for the Night Rose deck profile. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know how you feel about this deck profile. I have two more Grand Blue deck profiles coming up. They'll be in the description below. Kokitis and Nightmas, go ahead and check that out when I post them. Also, if you're thinking about building Grand Blue, if your friends thinking about building Grand Flu, don't forget to share this video. Also, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Like I said, I got plenty more stuff coming out. Just be patient with me, guys, that's all I gotta say. Um, that's all for today's video, so thank you so much for watching, and welcome to the Prime Vanguard channel, KP Kingdom. Uh, it was fun while it lasted, but I just kind of got tired of saying, like, oh, I'm the KP King, welcome, stuff like that, so we are officially Prime Vanguard, I'm doing a new channel intro that is gonna let everybody know who we are, but this is officially going to be the Prime Vanguard channel. KP Kingdom is dead, I'm still the KP King but I'm just not gonna declare on this channel anymore. So that is all for today's video. Again, thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you later.